Hello, everyone, and welcome to A Sit Down with a Scientist, a podcast where I usually sit down with people who do amazing work in science in the UK. But with things as they are, I've gone slightly further afield today. Through the power of the internet, this episode, I'm joined by Julie Johnson, a science illustrator from the United States who founded the wonderful Life Science Studio. You should definitely check out her work on Twitter at J.E. Himes. Anyway, we're limited to a 45 minute Zoom session. So without further ado, welcome to the podcast, Julie. Thank you. Happy to be here. Um, so before really we get into anything else, what is a science illustrator? A uh, science illustrator is somebody who works together with scientists to uh, create visual artwork or diagrams or anything along those lines that helps communicate the science or the research that's being done. So now, considering that we have amazing cameras there, you can use a camera on your phone to take a photo of uh, something you see out in the field or in the lab. Why would anyone need to necessarily draw something that they could otherwise take a photo of? There's a lot of reasons. So uh, a lot of the clients I work with, it's, um, it's because they work with something that maybe can't be photographed. Maybe it's gigantic and it's really hard to photograph. Maybe it's really rare. Um, there are lots of illustrators who work on, uh, there's a whole field called paleo art. So, <laughs> you know, illustrating, okay. um, dinosaurs and things that don't oh, wow. exist anymore. So sort yeah. of reimagining yeah. what that world might look like. There's also a lot that photos can't capture, um, and communicate well. So if you're trying to, I illustrate a lot of fish. Yeah. So if you're trying to, um, to show a certain part of a fish you know a photograph mm. there's a lot of distraction maybe it's underwater it's hard to see different details an illustration can actually highlight specific details of yeah. anatomy or or anything like that and then you know another reason is that um i also do illustrations that are diagrams or like um explaining a process yeah. so say you wanted to explain how photosynthesis works you're going to need some sort of art to show how and a diagram to show how that's actually mm. functioning a photograph can't quite do that okay so uh, i've got two questions from that first of all what is the weirdest thing you've ever been asked to draw by someone and second of all do you do you just do sort of science illustration or do you also um like illustrate uh, or produce art for sort of other means yeah weirdest thing i've illustrated some weird fish Mm, There's okay. uh, I've done a lot of projects with um, ichthyologists and evolutionary biologists studying fish, yeah. and there are some weird deep sea fish out there. Oh, you're telling me. <laughs> there's, there's one that is um, called the tube eye fish, and anyway, you guys should Google this because it's like... I, I, I'm, I'm going to, if you keep talking, fish. I'm, yeah. I, I'm <laughs> like getting on this. Tube eye fish. I don't remember the scientific name, but it's oh, got wow. these weird... <laughs> this is monstrous. <laughs> like, telescopy nightmarish eyes but it's really cool and um those are tricky to do because there are not a lot of photos of of these kind of bizarre deep sea fish or rare fish yeah and uh, that's probably the weirdest thing (laughs) do do you tend to find that when you so when you're doing deep sea fish i i know that um i don't remember a few years ago there were also all these photos going on on facebook of a blobfish um a weird looking fish that sort of looks like a a piece of snot um (laughs) but it it turns out that actually when it's under the sea sort of deep down because of the pressure um it maintains its its shape quite well but but when you sort mm-hmm. of bring it to the surface it turns into this this mucosal blob um how do you sort of get, know that you're drawing the right version of this tubide deep sea fish <laughs> yeah, um a lot of it kind of is it, looking at a lot of photos so spending yeah. a lot of time looking at photos looking at preserved animals if those are available Mm. Um, but then also kind of, uh, becoming familiar with your subject. So, um, if you've painted a lot of a certain type of organism, you kind of have a sense for how it, it would look in the real world or in its, in its habitat. Um, you know, a lot of times if you're, if you're painting, if you're, if you have fish specimens, the, um, like the fins will become degraded if they're preserved or or taken out of their habitat and you kind of learn like, okay, that's the fins actually are, are not going to be look jagged like that. They're going to be smooth because that's how it looks underwater. 
yeah um so so are you as i was saying are you sort of just doing science illustration at the minute or do you also sort of like i don't know for do kids books or something else like that or is is science like the focus of of all of your artistic endeavors i uh i do um science illustration for scientists but i also i love mushrooms and fungi (laughs) okay and so i paint a lot of different species of mushrooms and Mm. I have a little business where I sell those on mugs and shirts and things like Uh, that. Where where could people find those those illustrations if they wanted to look at them or theoretically buy them? Yeah those are all on my website as well on lifesciencestudios.com and uh, yeah and so there's a whole community of people out there who love you know, fungi and beautiful mushrooms, especially edible mushrooms like uh, chanterelles mm. or porcinis or something. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm amazed at sort of how how many. I, I'm no mycologist. I, I worked very briefly. I interned at Kew Gardens in in London, oh, yeah. um, but I am no mycologist by by any stretch. Um, and I, I always find it fascinating. I remember in the the first year of my degree, we went out to do some field work. It was like the first week of the first year of my degree. And we went out um, and I remember there, there were two mushrooms which struck me. I don't know if you've ever seen like the dead man, dead man's toe fungus. You found those? Those are we so found, weird. I've never seen it, those in life. They're really weird. And then the, the other was like a, ah, oh, stink horn, a witch's egg. That was yeah. the, like, there are so many weird <laughs> fungi. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely blew me away. And Q's collection similarly were full of all sorts of weird, mm-hmm. weird sort of creations of, yeah, bizarre, yeah. bizarre creatures or creatures fungi but yeah whatever whatever that categorized as um, okay but, but I, I suppose back back to, to the matter at hand science illustration so um you obviously now run your your business life science studios uh, when did you get into science illustration have you always been drawing or is, is it something you started doing more recently yeah i actually started out um wanting to be a marine biologist so uh i've always drawn so i've always been interested in art but when I went mm. to undergraduate, I wanted to uh, study marine invertebrates, <laughs> um, specifically well, octopuses. Wow. And uh, I was, so I went to undergraduate and got a degree in um, integrative biology. And, uh, and I loved it. I really enjoyed what I was doing. I, I worked in a lab there with um, a scientist who studied octopus behavior, which was just, I was totally enamored with that. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so yeah, and I did I did internships as a scuba diver. I did in, an internship in deep sea um, research at the Mario Bay Aquarium Research Institute, um, which was amazing and felt like mm. just exploration, you know. And uh, and I went to graduate school, um, intending to get a PhD mm. in ecology and evolutionary biology, and it just wasn't for me. It wasn't um, the the research wasn't uh wasn't as interesting for it, it wasn't a lifestyle that i enjoyed mm. i really liked working with people i was doing a work where i was in a lab by myself every day looking yeah. through a microscope and it it wasn't enjoyable mm. and so i left three years in i, I ended up with a master's and uh, went to work at a community college in their um life sciences department yeah and I did that for five years and I loved that. I was working, you know, high pace. I was working with lots of people and I was supporting science instead mm. of doing science. Yeah. And I thought, you know, that's really where I belong is supporting science in some way. And while I was there, I was in Monterey, California, and there's a science illustration graduate program in Monterey. Um, amazing. Is that and like I've never heard in the US of- or? Uh, are there other uh, there, illustration programs? The, so, the, so the one at Cal State University of Monterey Bay is yeah. um, is its own sort of one year program mm. uh, where it's a full time program and you get a, um, a, a certificate at the end. I, I'm not sure exactly what um, the details. I didn't do the program, yeah. but um, there there are other programs as um, there's one in uh, at the University of Washington. And I think there are a couple on the East Coast, but I'm not too familiar. Okay. Um, yeah. But so I'm in this this small town in Monterey, and there's a number of people who do science illustration that I ended up mm. meeting, and thinking, 
I had no idea that you could be a science illustrator, that that was something people do. Yeah. And I was like, oh, of course, of course, you know, every um, illustration diagram you see in a textbook or that you see in the media um, or in uh, scientific papers, somebody did those. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so I, um, I took a summer course uh, on marine biology science illustration with watercolor. Okay. And I was like, oh, this is, this is for me. This is great. Yeah. And um, so it, it really taught me how to use watercolor. And now that's, that's, I use watercolor in 90% of what I do. Hmm. And, um, and so, yeah, so then I started doing it on the side in my spare time and and through my connections at, in graduate school, I had a, a number of people that I knew that were scientists and yeah. every once in a while I'd be like, hey, you know, can you like draw this bee that I study? I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it sort of grew from there. Yeah. And had, had you sort of always done art or had you done art as a hobby on the side during your, your sort of time in grad school and as an undergraduate or was it something you sort of discovered after you'd, you'd finished at grad school that, that it was something you could do and you could do really really well? I always loved doing art as a, as a kid mm. and when I was in uh, you know junior high high school my hobby was taking <laughs> I would take my parents had a big collection of National Geographic magazines right yeah and so I would take National Geographic magazines and open up to pictures of photos of animals and try and draw them exactly like the picture. Wow. And, you know, I took a few art classes as a kid. Uh, and then undergraduate and graduate school, I did not have time to do art. So I, I really didn't do any art since, you know, high school. And then yeah. um, I did a lot more photography. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah. But yeah, so then after I left graduate school, I all of a sudden had my evenings and weekends free and there was a lot of illustration and art happening in my community. So I had a lot of people that I could learn from and, and that were doing classes or doing events that I could, I could mm. learn from them. Yeah. Did, did you find, um, so you mentioned your parents having loads of Nagio magazines do you think that they sort of played any role in uh, you sort of first of all wanting to become a scientist and then uh, wanting to become a science illustrator did they sort of push you into science or were they scientists themselves yeah my dad's a geologist and my mom was a teacher Blimey. yeah and uh and we we lived um I grew up over in Indonesia and so, and we lived, you know, in the jungle when I was a kid. <laughs> and That's so, amazing. Yeah. And so, you know, a lot of our, our vacations, family vacations involved going to natural places, going to see mm. wildlife, going to zoos, museums, and aquariums, and um, fishing, being outdoors, hiking. And so that had a huge influence on me in terms of wanting to be around, uh, animals and plants and, and, um, loving nature. Um, yeah. but pretty sure my dad, you know, is pushing me into something that would make more money than biology or art. <laughs> I, I know that feeling far too well. <laughs> um, and, and did you, did you sort of, so you mentioned you grew up in Indonesia. Did you sort of grow up on the coast? Is that where you fell in love with, with fish or, or marine no. life generally? Yeah, no, we were in the middle of Sumatra. Uh, so we were in the jungle <laughs> yeah. and, um, but we, my dad loves fishing and I love fishing. And so we would, we would do a lot of fishing vacations or, um, you know, I just, when I was little, I went to the modern day aquarium for the first time and mm. I just was like, I want to play with sea otters, you know? <laughs> I, I, I do know it was it was Monterey Bay Aquarium that's that sold me on, on marine biology as well um yeah, yeah. yeah it was at that first visit and you sort of just realized like oh this is first of all this is science communication done right and second of all this is like the vastness of the ocean in the UK mm -hmm. we've got the world's oldest aquarium which actually is in the city I was I was born in and raised around Brighton um but we don't have sort of 
aquariums of that scale, probably because it's quite a small country. But Monterey Bay was, was that selling point. On the topic of Monterey Bay, you mentioned that you interned at the Mabari Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. Mm-hmm. Did you get to see the uh, submersibles? You mentioned you did deep sea yeah. stuff as well. Did you get to use them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> really? What, what, was, what was that like? Well, so they're all uh, remote operated, ROVs, yeah. remote operated vehicles. And, um, and so we would go on cruises. And wow. that means getting on the big Western flyer on their ship and going out. Sometimes I did, I think I did two cruises that were five day long cruises. Wow. And um, so you sleep on the ship and, and the middle of that ship opens up and drop the submersible down into the water underneath the ship, mm. a long tether. And, um, and then you sit in the c- control room in the dark with these big screens, high definition cameras, and, uh, and it's really cool. It's a collaboration between engineers and pilots and who, who control the, the, um, the ROV, and yeah. then also scientists who are doing experiments um, and some that are really good at identifying animals. And so they'll take these cameras and someone will be like, oh, I, th- I think I see something over there. And they'll zoom in really close and be like, oh, my gosh, it's this crazy looking jellyfish or squid or something. And yeah, and you get to watch it or collect it or take data on it in some way. It's, it was just amazing. Yeah, it is. It's like a whole other world. Like you, you, yeah. you see like the bottom of the ocean, and I've I've never seen it in, in person, or at least as close as that. But it is absolutely awe inspiring. What were you researching on your internship there, or on your work with with Monterey <laughs> Bay? Uh, I studied jellyfish while I was there, and yeah. um, I studied uh, jellyfish sperm. <laughs> fun. <laughs> it's I fun. It, it's it's a family exactly. friendly show, though. <laughs> yeah. I was interested in reproduction and nobody yeah. had, you know, these are jellyfish that broadcast spawn into the vast deep ocean mm. where the animals are not super close together. Yeah. Or at least we don't know if they, you know, gather in groups to, to reproduce. Mm. But so nobody had looked at like, okay, well, what happens, you know, when they're releasing gametes into the water, how are they going to meet and create <laughs> new life? <laughs> yeah. And so, so I did um, a lot of, uh, it, was, it was fascinating. I was looking at um, the longevity and uh, shape of the sperm that no one had ever actually looked at. And it was kind of cool. Deep sea jellyfish sperm heads look like arrows, like they're super hydrodynamic. Oh, wow. And, um, and they live a really, really, really long time compared to other organisms. So yeah. That's pretty cool. That's- that's really cool. And then your, your PhD, was that sort of at any, in any way related to that? Had that sort of, you'd gone, oh, this is what I want to study for the rest of my life, jellyfish sperm? Or, or <laughs> did, did you change tack after you, after you finished your internship and went to, to grad school? Well, sort of. I went to, and studied abalone sperm instead. <laughs> so, well, you know. <laughs> so I worked on abalone reproduction and looking at chemical ecology and the chemicals that uh, eggs release that attract uh, the sperm, which is yeah. was really interesting. Do you do you ever look back and wish that that you'd sort of carried on doing research at all, or do you think science illustration is is your calling? And it's it's. Yeah. I am much happier doing science illustration. I I'm love doing science it. illustration. Yeah. I I get to learn about all kinds of things that I mm. never would have before. You know, because yeah. now I I get to work with scientists in all sorts of different fields that are studying interesting things and by illustrating those things i also get to learn about them and contribute to them in some way yeah yeah you're you're still an an active participant in in scientific research but you're not just focusing on abalone gametes you're also you have the opportunity to look at whatever you fancy i guess yeah Yeah. i mean i just finished a project on manta ray uh bycatch and it's like Okay. I, so I got to illustrate manta rays, which was really awesome. Yeah. Uh, but I learned a whole lot about the, the fisheries and what happens when rays are, are caught in tuna nets and different ways that people are working to, to mitigate that. Mm. And 
learn about their even their just basic biology yeah so that was really cool <laughs> is 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 that a really big problem like ma- manta rays getting caught as, as by catching tuna nets because obviously they're, they're huge they can't exactly get out yeah they're huge and that kind of gives you an idea of the scale of the tuna nets mm. that are big enough they're they're staggeringly staggeringly large um and yeah the the problem is we don't know a ton about these large rays yeah where they live um they're they're long-lived you know it's they're they're gigantic and and so you you it's hard to assess what kind of impact the fishing has on the ray population when you don't know much about the ray population to start with yeah so the research i was working with was asking those basic questions but also working with the fisheries to try and figure out okay how can we make it so these rays maybe we're fishing in areas where they they aren't you know maybe yeah. that would help and things like that so um, mm. but yeah it's to to imagine people trying to move a six thousand pound animal off the deck of a boat safely yeah, yeah. <laughs> You sort of forget how big they are. You see them on yeah. Blue Planet, or whatever. You go, they're they're big. They're big. Yeah. You forget quite how large <laughs> they are, into six thousand pounds. And that's what something that where you know, trying to she needed images because trying to take pictures of something that large um, that lives in the open ocean that is really challenging. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the the role of science illustration, which is amazing. Now, I, I always wished I could I could draw when I was a kid. I couldn't. I I have poor hand eye coordination, and frankly, I'm, <laughs> I'm blind. But theoretically, if I was even faintly good at drawing, or I I just wanted to be a science illustrator, how would I go about doing that and and getting a foot in the door? Yeah, there's um, there are a lot of great classes and workshops, and there's an organization uh, here in the U.S. called the Guild of Natural Science Illustrators. Mm. Um, and they have a lot of great resources. Uh, GNSI.org, I think is their, their address. Um, and they have conferences. I, I learn a ton from their, their conferences and their workshops and, and just being part of that community. Yeah. Um, people are really nice and very helpful if you have questions. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, practicing, just being interested and, you know, uh, find a, a plant in your garden and sit there and, and look at it and try and practice illustrating it or illustrate from photos, you know, drawing, pick up a pencil. And I would say practicing is the biggest thing. I, I draw every yeah. day. So mm, Wow. E- even when but you're not working, just, just for the fun of it. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's towards something, something I'm working yeah. on. But. Um, I'd love to do more just um, just drawing things that I see, but <laughs> to d- tend not to have a ton of time. <laughs> you, you, you still enjoy it. it. It's not that now it's your work. It's not something that you, you love anymore. It's still your, your absolute passion. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I wish I could be drawing all the time. <laughs> yeah. but so is, is, is the way of the world, I suppose. Well, um, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me about your amazing work. Um, if people want to keep up to date with uh, what you're doing, uh, what you're working on, uh, you can find Julie at uh, on her website, lifesciencestudios.com, um, or you can follow her on Twitter at... What is your Twitter? J-E Himes, J-E-H-I-M-E-S. And uh, for all things Sit Down With A Scientist, you can head over to my Twitter account at SJ underscore Mackay, uh, where you'll be able to catch up with all of my videos, ramblings, rants, and raves. But for now, uh, have a great few weeks and I'll see you next time. ta Thank you. Now I don't know how to, how to stop recording. Ah! <laughs>